Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the latest edition of Jake's Take with Jacob Eicher podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Eicher, the chief content producer and writer of Jake's Take.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. If you're watching us on YouTube today, please give us a thumbs up, please subscribe, and please use whatever you can to build my YouTube audience. I really appreciate it. If you're listening to us on our audio platforms, thank you so much. Download this episode and more episodes. And not only that, please review and please also give us a five-star rating. I really appreciate it. Today, I'm so excited to have one of my friends on. He is an eight-time Emmy winner. He's the entertainment reporter for The Pitch, Kansas City. And he's currently the digital content and video guru, biography guru for Lillian James Creative. So please help me welcome... Michael Mackey to the podcast. Yay. Thanks, friend. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I appreciate you very much. Michael, I am always in awe of you, what you do. Congratulations. I'm not to mention this guy is best local personality in the pitch. It was a hard fought battle. I did not win last year. And I actually, to be perfectly honest, I did not think I was going to win best local personality this year. And then I did. So there you go. Props to me. I am so proud pat of you because you definitely that. are. I'm gonna pat you. I'm gonna pat your pat you on the back. For my, this is me patting you on the back. Thanks, friend. Yeah, because Michael, guys, Michael has done a lot of incredible things. He's met so many incredible people, and we'll get to that. So first, let's talk about your origin story. So when you get interested in journalism, how did that passion evolve into desire to support, pursue a career in the media industry? I joke that I always, growing up, I I knew growing up that I always wanted to be in TV, on TV, or watching TV. Some, some I knew that my job would have some semblance of that. And so when I went to college, I went to the University of Iowa, and I was like, well, broadcast, that's what I'm going to go into. And that's what I did. And um, I got a job as an intern, right, literally right out of college at the TV station that I watched growing up, KCCI in Des Moines, Iowa's news leader. And my career just kind of took off from there. Of course, I had to cut my teeth and grow and blossom just like everybody else. But uh, yeah, KCCI was a great uh, stomping ground to just learn and throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks and uh, I was kind of in the same boat with a lot of other 20-somethings who were fresh out of college. So we all sort of uh, honed and curated our craft there together. And then I realized, uh, it took me a minute, but then I realized, oh, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at this. And uh, so then I took my talents to Orlando uh, for a hot minute. And then I ended up back here in Kansas City. Which is amazing. And I got to give you credit because... I've done multiple college internships and I've loved, there's so many incredible people and lessons I've learned there. I got to give a shout out to a lot of my mentors, including Rob Lowe, formerly Fox 4 News in Kansas City, who now is in Denver. And speaking of Denver, the legendary Andrew Hio of formerly of KMGH. So both of them are amazing mentors. It's amazing that you've learned, you learned so much interning. Oh, I really did. And it's funny because the gal who sort of taught me everything I know about video production and talking to clients. She, her name is Wendy Lyons, bless her heart. She just retired last Friday after 40 years in the biz. And so I sort of, uh, I crafted a very nice Facebook uh, uh, post to her because without her, I don't think I would be such a success in this field. So shout out to the mentors who uh, sort of coddle us and baby us and sort of lead us by the hand. Absolutely. And I got to throw out two more names for me, Don Champion and Mark Stewart. Both of them are KMGH7, and I would not have been without a Rob Lowe and those people. And also Tess, another friend of ours, Tess Koppelman. Oh, the Tess Koppelman. Yes, I'm familiar with her. Absolutely. The so those five television, are- as you know, the television industry is very incestuous. So any market that you know somebody, you know 10 other people just because of that. So it's been fun to watch all my friends who have scattered across the country for just from my very first station in Des Moines. And then, of course, the countless other friends who have you know scattered from Kansas City and the Orlando markets. So like I said, I would like to say I, in every big city in the United States, I have a friend who I can crash on their couch if need be. 
same with me and some of my and some of my friends from Boulder because they, a lot of my friends are doing amazing things. So it's amazing to see all of our friends succeed. However, we're not talking about all of our friends. We're talking about all about you, Michael. So we got to continue our conversation and let's talk about who were the people that inspired your career as a journalist. Hmm. Well, I always, you know, I was obsessed with. I sort of got um, raised on uh, trashy tabloid talk shows. So I think it. I think I gravitate back to all of those hosts in the slew in the in the '90s because there were you know everyone had a talk show in the '90s. But uh, I always sort of watched how each of them came together. I mean, each of them were a little bit different. Like Ricky Lake, she catered to the twenty-somethings, and you know Maury, he was way over the top tabloid. But I always gravitated towards Oprah. Every anytime anybody asks who would you have dinner with, it's uh, the answer is always and will always be Oprah. She's kind of become the uh, litmus, the barometer by which I do all my celebrity interviews. And not to mention, it's amazing because for me, you brought me back to the 90s. I got to give a couple of people shout outs because the late Regis Philbin, the late Barbara Walters, even Rosie O'Donnell, those three for me inspired me to have like a talk show esque or not to mention the great 90s version of the Today Show with Brian Gubble, Katie Kurt, Ann Curry, and even that Lauer. So those are the people that inspired me. Same. I'm, I mean, I really cut my teeth. I really grew up in the 90s. So it was fun to watch all those people do. I, I, I'll, come on, Sally Jesse Raphael. Who doesn't love me some Sally Jesse? Come on. I know, I know. And her red gla- and I love her. And what makes her stand out was her red glasses. We all knew when we saw those glasses, that meant Sally. When you see a huge ball, you see Rosie O'Donnell. When you see Notre Dame, Regis Philbin. Yes, and when you see whoa, 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 you see Arsenio. So there you go. It all everybody has their shtick. Absolutely. We'll be talking about stick and how people can have them later on in our conversation. But I want to talk to you about some of the challenges that you face staying in our industry and how did you overcome those obstacles? You know, I just I was very persistent. I never took no for an answer and I never took anything personally. And I think that is sort of the in television you have to have an incredibly thick skin and were all of my celebrity interviews you know did i knock each and every one of them out of the park no i did not but you know i learned from all of them especially when i was a baby entertainment reporter and i didn't know any better i didn't know what to ask and so i sort of learned uh through trial and error uh the questions to ask and what not to ask and sort of how to nuance each interview and at least find some nugget of uh, some personal nugget to sort of pepper them with. So you felt like that you had a connection uh, with the uh, person you were talking to because in any celebrity interview, usually you get four to five minutes. So first you have to make a connection. Then you have to pepper in some really good questions that get you the sound bites that you're going to use in your story. And then you try to get one zinger in that just sort of throws them for a loop. So it's really like you get a laugh or a giggle or a snort or a tortle out of them. So that's always been kind of my, um, my uh, mantra. And not to mention, I gotta go. If you guys look for Michael Mackey's reel, you'll find so many amazing things. I gotta say, speaking that, I got to see your conversation with Meg Ryan and you, with that interaction with it's classic. Meg Ryan was a good sport. Uh, she just sort of came out guns a blazing, just sort of cheeky and tongue in cheek. And uh, I just met her energy one on one. So we goofed around a lot. I don't, I cannot even tell you if we got to the interview portion. I think we just made barbs and jokes and wisecracks for four minutes. But, you know, sometimes that's what you got to do. Absolutely. And I got to say, I was a little nervous when I said Anna Nicole, the late Anna Nicole. Oh, Anna Nicole Smith, bless her heart. She was so out of her mind on, allegedly, allegedly out of her mind on God knows what. And I, the interview was just going south fast. And so I wanted to somehow wake her up or pep her up a little bit. And so I just quickly shifted gears and I was like, Anna. Pop quiz. And <laughs> you can just tell as soon as I clapped my hands that she was like, what? And uh, I just asked her the most insipid questions that popped into my head, like how many people were in the Jackson 5? When was the War of 1812? 
is your skeleton on the inside or outside of your body. And um, well, just trust me, go to michaelmackey.com and you'll see if she answered correctly or not. She did not. Oh no. But also another one, you got to in, uh, interview legends like and legendary duos like Joan and Melissa before the Oscars. I did. Uh, Joan Rivers, I've interviewed her several times, Joan and Melissa, and they were always quite fun. You just, those are one of the things where you'd ask like a question and that was it. So you better make sure your one question was a really good one because they were going to talk for them. They were going to talk and they were going to interrupt you interrupt each other for the next three or four minutes. I was looking back today. It was fact I was going because I put a list of all the celebs that I'd interviewed over the years. It's funny, dude. I have interviewed 10 Academy Award winners. 10. That's wow. nuts to me. It's bonkers. So. Oh, my God. That must have been insane. But and yeah, oh, here's another thing, too. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. But I was uh, cleaning out, I don't know, some boxes in the basement and i found a, d a very dusty box of old beta tapes circa i'm gonna guess 2000 maybe late 90s i don't know but anyway there was an interview in there i swear to god with jamie lee curtis and so i didn't even remember interviewing jamie lee curtis so i'm gonna have to get that digitized and see what that's all about i can't tell you what movie what it was for i got no i literally have nothing it just said m2 jamie lee curtis interview and i was like okay so I guess that makes number 11 Academy Award winner. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. I love Jamie Lee Curtis. It just, I hope it's that. For, I would love to see what's digitized. It might, I really hope it's for like a uh, Freaky Friday or something that that's one of my all time favorite movies of hers. Maybe. I mean, when did Free? Uh, I feel like it was like 2000 or 2001. It, uh, that's, I think, I don't I know. Think I'll have to go back and look at her IMDb page. I think it might be in the mid 2000s because it was Lindsay Lohan as well. Because it was, I remember that guitar solo at the end and seeing her i know i don't know if she played a guitar or anything but that was probably one of the most epic moments for me for me movie wise in the 2000s you know the only person that i've always wanted to interview but never have is someone that you have interviewed and i am so jealous it's dolly really which one yeah. dolly parton oh uh. my god dolly <laughs> Dolly, this was, I'm very, guys, for those of you who don't know, on my earlier versions of jakesake.com, I interviewed a legendary Dolly Parton, but however, I had to fight two dozen other reporters on the call. I don't care. I would have, I would have like knocked those two dozen other reporters out of the running and I would have just carried on a conversation with her. I've been in the same room as Dolly, not concerts, but like in the same room as her twice and I've never gotten close to her. So that if you're watching Dolly and you probably are uh, just know that you are um, you are the last, the very last, you are the Zenith, the pinnacle, the nadir of celebrities. I want to interview. Well, you and Madonna, but Dolly comes first. Absolutely. Dolly comes first. And by the way, I heard from the grapevine, she was in Kansas city earlier and I was earlier this year and I, for her to promote the imagination library. And I was so angry that I could not, that it was at the Jewish Community Center when I was working when I worked there, and I was so angry that no one told me. I was out of town that day. Yeah, she was in Topeka and she was in Kansas City for a super hot minute. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to have had a chance to be in that same room. With, I agree with you, Michael. To be in the same room with Dolly and maybe interview Dolly, that would be in person, not with two dozen reporters, would be the a career highlight. That would be yeah. That would be. I I could die. I could honestly die happy. So there you go. All right. So in addition to everybody that we mentioned before, what have, what have been some of your most memorable interviews that stand out to you? Hmm. Well, um, people always ask me what were your best and your worst. Uh, I can honestly say probably my best were two women who I thought who I went in thinking they were going to be divas and they were not it was jennifer lopez and jennifer aniston both who were at like they, they were stratospheric levels of their career i mean they still are but i mean they were like white hot and um i don't know i don't know why i went in thinking having this expectation that they were going to be like divas and problematic and they couldn't have been nicer more gracious more chatty more engaging they just checked every single box that I had 
Jenny or J Jenny, haha. <laughs> she was indeed Jennifer Lopez was indeed Jenny from the block the day that I talked to her. She could not have been more authentic. And it was funny because she had just this is back in ooh, 2000, maybe 2001. She had just opened up a restaurant in Pasadena called Madres. And I was joking with her because it you couldn't get reservations for like six months. That's what a hot ticket it was. And I at the end of the interview, I had maybe, I don't know, 20 seconds left. And I saw the clock going tick, 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 tick. I said, girl, who does a boy have to know around here to get a good table at Madre's? Because I knew I was going out to LA in like three weeks. And she goes, well, that would be me. Reach out to, and I don't remember the person. And I did. And I sent them a, uh, this tells you how long ago it was. I sent them a VHS tape and I said, see, from Jennifer Lopez's mouth to your ears. And by God, I got a table for six on a Saturday night. Shocker. That's, that's one of, that's probably my best, like full circle celebrity story moment. That is just insane that Jennifer Lopez did that. Did, you got that through Jayla and you, you got the people to get you that table at that hot restaurant. That, I know. Lynn, I'm sorry if I got to pick up my jaw again. No, I, he seriously was like, I'm sorry. And you are, and I was like, Michael Mackey. Uh, like BFFs with JLo. And I said, just watch the videotape when it comes in. And he burst out laughing and he goes, man, something like you got some cojones or some, I don't remember the exact thing. He goes, I'll get you in on whatever day. Cause I had a super small window of being in LA. So, and it was really good too. I had um, like plantain shrimp and plantains or some, I don't know. It was something Cuban esque, Cuban -esque I think. That would have been a great combo. I love both of them very much because those are amazing. And I got to say, that must be on your bucket list moment, a bucket list moment for you. Uh, well, I was there and I was kind of like looking around and it was it was definitely a who's who. Like I felt way, 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 way out of place. And um, I sat sort of kitty corner from, oh my gosh, I'm totally um hispanic one uh one mark Oscar. anthony shakira no, it, was a woman. it was a woman yeah i see what you did there mark anthony no uh not did sound the height was it Gloria Stefan, high? uh oh, one Celia Cruz. okay it's gonna it'll come to me i promise uh, penelope right, cruz I'm sorry, I'm just, what? penelope cruz i sat oh, wow. from penelope cruz. so there you go oh wow i should have wow, said wow. ben I would have, I should have said, Pen, how are you, girl? And she would have said, M Square, what's up? No, she wouldn't. Have. She didn't hear me. Yeah, that would have been hysterical if you did that. And this is, that's pretty cool that you got to have the chance to do that. And then also, Jennifer Aniston, you brought up, I was actually watching your interview with Matthew Perry. Oh, yeah, Matthew Perry. Nice. He was in the throes of his addiction when I interviewed him, according to him you know last year when he released his memoir um it was for a movie that he actually they actually had to shut down i think it was serving sarah or saving sarah something anyway he in the middle of the movie they had to shut down production so he could go to rehab servicing sarah saving sarah i don't remember any but anyway i interviewed him for that particular movie and um i it, it makes me wonder if he was strung out during our interview, he certainly didn't come across that way. But if if the timeline adds up, he was full on, full tilt into his addiction during that period. Wow. And it's just amazing that he masked that while you you were able to, you were able to, he, uh, it's just amazing. It's just awestruck because that man did incredible work. And not just for television, but also for trying to help people out, get out of their circumstances. So I got to to say, put a moment of silence for him. Thank you, Matthew Perry. All right, let's try to get some more up. Let's move it upbeat, shall we, Michael? Let's do it. All right, so let's talk about your column for the Pitch Kansas City. It's called Four in Name Questions. So can you describe the origin story of this column to my audience? I, well, it's the interviewer and it's the interviewer in me. I always like to ask questions or, and usually they're probing questions. Well, I decided to completely pivot and just pitch this particular column to the pitch. 
And I said, well, how about if I ask super stupid, insipid, moronic questions? And they were like, eh, okay, we'll see how it goes. And now I'm probably 200 columns in and it has become sort of my claim to fame here in the Metro, just because people really, who knew that people liked reading about people who were answering stupid questions, e.g., what are your thoughts on liquid soap? That was a stupid question that I asked like two weeks ago. So they are pretty, they are pretty inane. That's thus the name of the column. Hashtag for inane questions. Awesome. Awesome. However, you also still get to have the opportunity to speak with some celebrities. And early this year, you had a plethora of people that I really admired. I got to say, Ruben started in Clay Aiken 20 years ago. I don't want to gauge myself, but. I was in eighth grade when that season took place. And that's why I got on to how I fell in love with music talent competition shows. So what was it like talking to them during their 20th anniversaries? Ruben Studdard and Clay Aiken, literally to this day, 20 years later, are like an old married couple. They legit finished each other's sentences. They were quippy. They snipped at each other. Uh, it was funny because Ruben was running late and you know clay was clay was calling him because he was late thinking that he was going to miss the interview he did not he just uh, got the times mixed up because he was on one coast and clay was on another it was pretty funny to just watch them so i just let them just banter back and forth i was the first interview of the day so uh they had uh, some catching up to do before i even jumped in and started my interview but it was uh it was a good that one was perfect because the the uh, publicist gave me 20 minutes, which, as you know, is an eternity. You're lucky to get 10, maybe 15 at the most. And so I just kept it. I just kept right on a rolling with it. And then uh, the last big one that I had out of the complete clear blue sky was Derek Huff from Dancing with the Stars. And <laughs> so at the end of the uh, interview, he said, hey, are you coming to the show? He has a he's on tour with a, his a, like a, a world of dance tour. And uh, uh, he said, are you coming to the show? And I was like, <laughs> Derek, of course, I'm coming to the show. I wasn't coming to the show. <laughs> uh, and he was like, OK, well, that's great. I, I'm excited. Will you pop backstage and say hi? And I was like, of course, I will pop backstage and say hi, Derek crazy and it was a phone interview and not a zoom interview like it usually is i don't remember where he was maybe he was on a bus or something and didn't have wi-fi but it was a phone interview and he was like well how am i gonna know it's you and i jokingly said haha i jokingly said uh derek this this one's easy i got this i when i see you i will yell marco and then you will yell polo deal and he burst out laughing he thought that was the funniest thing he ever heard he goes Mackie, I don't care wh who I'm talking to or what I'm doing. I swear to God, if you yell Marco, I will stop what I'm doing and yell Polo. And I, when we got backstage, there he was. And I literally turned to my friend Carrie and I was like, watch this, thinking it was more like Willie or Woni. And I swear to God, I, Jacob, I yelled Marco. And he went like he got the joke and he turned around. Then there were a sea of people standing there so he didn't know who did it and so i went like that he goes polo and he walked over and we had a moment and it was really nice thank you thank you derek huff for for that moment because it was awesome i gotta say that was epic because the thing is i've been trying to get derek on my show or my platform for years and sadly haven't but i'm so happy for you and that must and that must have made your year it was, it was a pretty, my friend Carrie was like, what is happening? And I'm like, I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> so, <laughs> All righty. I got to talk to you about, because the thing is someone thought one guest that we particularly like, and I had on my Instagram and saw her show thought I was you. Do you want to know who it was? Wait, somebody thought you were me on what? When I went to see their show, Caroline oh. Ray thought I was you. Oh, I well, Carol, really? Yeah, Caroline. I was telling her about a podcast, at, and everything. At, she was like, like "Afterwards, are actually in the show." Afterwards. Well, I want to hear this story. How did that come about? 
Okay, so I was I was bringing up a podcast. I was introducing myself, and, and I told CJ Merriman, who was touring with Caroline Ray at the, and they were at the comedy store, comedy club of Kansas City, and they thought, and I told her I was about podcast. He was like, or website. Jake said, "You're like, are you Michael?" I'm like, "No, I'm Jacob." So nice to meet you. And I adore Caroline because I'm a huge fan of Sabrina, Teenage Witch, and of course Hollywood Squares, the Whoopi version. And it's it was great to see her in action, but. There was like so a uh, mistaken identity. Well, Carol, Caroline had was we started out the interview and she was um, horizontal because she had been in a car accident the day before we talked. And she was like, I'm sorry that I'm not my usual peppy self, but I, my neck is killing me from this car accident. Blah, blah, blah. Words, words. And so I sort of like kept it rather low key. And by the end, she was like, well, I'm sitting up now. I hope you're happy. And she was super chatty. So. Yeah, Caroline Ray was a particular. She's a she gets a gold star. She was a really really good interview, despite the fact that I thought it was going to be a little low key because of her fender bender the day before. That's amazing, and I gotta say this: you had country royalty, Winona Jeff. Ooh, Winona was a good get. Okay, so here's the deal: anytime anybody famous ever comes to Kansas City. I will reach out to their publicist or to the venue or whatever and say, hey, I see that so-and-so is coming to town. Uh, can I get an interview? And nine out of 10 times, it's literally, no, absolutely not. Who are you? No. And then the other one time, it's like, maybe, we'll see. Probably not. Well, with Winona, they said, well, maybe, we'll see, whatever. Well, I said, hey, here's the deal. I've already interviewed Winona before. This was for way, this was a hundred years ago for Lilo and Stitch. She did the soundtrack for Lilo and Stitch. That tells you how long ago it was. So I sent the publicist the, I sang a duet with Winona of a hunk, a hunk of burn and love from Elvis. And I said, see, Winona loves me. We're practically BFFs always and forever. And by God, the next day Winona called me and we talked for a half hour. And that was pro that's probably been my best interview all year because she was super candid. It was just a few months after her mom passed away and she had just had a uh, granddaughter. It was a whole thing. So I got to say, I'm so glad you got to reunite with my Wyona. Wyona. Yeah. And I made her do I made her do the duet with me again of a hunk of hunk of burning love because why not? Actually, and, uh, I said, well, do you remember me? And she said, no. And I said, how seriously? We sang a hunk, we sang a duet of a hunk of hunk of burn and love. And she was like, Yeah, I got nothing. And I said, Well, can we do it again just to refresh her memory? And she was like, Which part? And I was like, the chorus, duh. So Winona, she's she and I are besties. Ginger powers activate. All righty, all righty. So besides Dolly, who else is on your list of dream interviews? Mm, well, like I said, Madonna is right up there. I'm trying to think. I, I've checked almost every box. Like I always wanted to interview Lindsay Wagner, the bionic woman. I always wanted to interview Linda Carter, the um, Wonder Woman. Uh, so pretty much anybody who, yeah, Dolly and Madonna. And I'm trying to think maybe I feel like I need a really big A-lister. So maybe like The Rock, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you for Dolly, Madonna, and The Rock. Oh, what a mixed bag that is. Oh, I lied. Oprah. I would kill oh, yes, to interview Oprah. Actually, I would just like to be in the same orbit as Oprah. Can I just be in the same room and just, you know, absorb all of her Oprah-ness? Is, is that an option? That's what I would Absolute, like. Absolutely. And I would love to, if I had the opportunity, I would love to hear her stories because of the people she interacted with, like Nelson Mandela and, of course, Tina Turner. And how she, like any interviewer, she has a, a few horrible ones in the mix. Like her very first interview with Elizabeth Taylor, she said was the worst interview that she's ever done because Elizabeth didn't want to talk about anything. And so what are you going to talk about? Elizabeth's perfume for an hour or her diamonds, her white diamond? Well, I mean, so it's funny to, how a celebrity can humble even Oprah. Absolutely, absolutely. Not to mention, I would love to learn her battle her um, in interview with Whitney, because that interview, uh, the 2009 interview with Whitney remains one of my all-time favorites, because this was Whitney post-breakup, post-return to album, 
And it would have been great to learn about that long conversation. Yeah. And, you know, we only got to see what Oprah aired. It kind of makes me wonder, you know, what hit the cutting room floor? Because sometimes a publicist will call me and be like, yeah, you can't use that question. Or, you know, <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So it makes me wonder what hit the cutting room floor on Oprah. Or on, uh, same here. Yeah, same here. So as 2023 wraps up and 2024 is, is almost here, you are probably one of the best people I get to ask this question. To, uh, so if you're looking for, pe if people are looking to learn how to brand themselves in 2024, what several pieces of advice would could you give my audience? Well, that has become my big boy job. Um that I work for a local boutique marketing agency and I do personal branding for people. And it's been a, an interesting, um, uh, it has been an interesting learning curve because I never really realized how much effort and energy it takes into creating someone else's personal brand. And I joke that personal branding is a lot like that old philosophical adage where uh, if a tree falls in the woods and no one hears it did it actually fall well personal branding uh is like if you do a bunch of really amazing powerful things and no one knows about it did they actually happen or did they actually mean anything or did they actually have any impact so there you go that's my little quip on what personal branding is and so i've sort of um learned how to it's very schizophrenic i've learned how to write in other people's voices haha uh -huh. Uh, for example, today I worked on a chef, an author, and a cybersecurity expert. So that is that is a very strange conglomeration, but that's it's all in a day's work. So, and tips for personal branding: be your best, genuine, authentic self online, because anything else people will be, will be able to see right through. Like you're a perfect example of being your best, authentic, genuine self online, dude. So props to you. You have a very strong very genuine personal brand. Michael, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Coming from you, that means everything. So thank you. You are welcome, young man. All righty. So let's start wrapping up our conversation. So last question, are you ready? I'm ready. Hit me. All righty, Michael. Where can they find your work? And also, where can connect with you on social media? I am at m2esq that's m squared esquire so i'm at m2esq on all social media and then um obviously on my website where i blog and ha i have all my lovely and talented celebrity interviews uh and that would be michael mackey of michaelmackey.com so awesome so guys have you missed an episode of the Jake's Take with Jake and Malaysia podcast? This is our channels on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podchaser, Spotify, and Spreaker. This is Jake's Take with Jake and Malaysia, J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Jake and Malaysia, J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. And if you want to hear or see more of my interviews or Want to know what's going on with Mass Singer season 10 or what happened last season during America's Got Talent? Well, I head to jakes-shake.com. Once again, jakes-shake.com. Michael, it was an honor and privilege to talk with you. Thank you so much for taking time and your schedule to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. Noel, right back at you. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thanks. Awesome. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until the next time, have a great one, everybody. Goodbye.